Hello and welcome back to my channel. This week Joelle brings enthusiasm in her funny interview so make sure you stick around for the whole of the video to find out more about what it's like to be a commissioning editor at Coronet. Hi, I'm Joelle Obusi Sutra and I'm a commissioning editor at Coronet which is an imprint of Hodder and Stoughton. I still can't drive. I still can't drive. I'm 27 years old. My provisional license is about to expire. I did my test once and failed. And then I said, you know, I'll allow it. <laughs> like I live in London. It's, it's fine, it's calm. Like I don't need to, I don't need a car anyway. I've done my theory test five times because it keeps on expiring. Okay, this year, this year I'm passing. I'm passing my driving test this year because it's actually getting long and it's getting embarrassing. I want to drive <laughs> this year. Okay, I say, well, I live by two mottos, really. The first one is protect your peace at all costs. I'm really, really into looking after one's mental health. So if that means not being on social media every day, turning off my phone, taking time for myself, you know, to read or just do something else and just not engaging with trolls, negativity online, that's something that I've really, really, really learned over the past couple of years, where I used to just always engage. I was always like, ah, ah, ah suck your mum, ah, ah. <laughs> like online. And it was just so tiring because these people do not care. They're, they're professional trollers and things like that. And so every time I see some kind of negativity, some kind of argument or some drama, whatever, I always say to myself, just protect your peace at all costs. You don't need to, you don't need to be a part of it. Your, your mental health and your state of mind is more important. So protect your peace. And then I always say, <laughs> I don't know how, you know, controversial this one is, but I always say that for women, for, you know, people of the LGBT community or black women, I always say, you know, carry yourself like a mediocre straight white man. It, it's a great thing to do. Not to say, not to say be mediocre, but carry yourself with that kind of confidence that you're just going to get something, you know that you're just going to do it and get it, just carry yourself with that kind of confidence. And that's taken me places, I can't lie. So I guess it works. So that's one of my other mottos. Things just start changing. And then it became something, I just became more of myself, to be honest. I started not taking any nonsense from anyone, whether they were, you know, in a higher position than me or not. And I just became more of myself and it was amazing. But at the start, I had to fake it till I made it just because I was just a bit unsure about how people would perceive me as one of the very few black people in the office or maybe some of the very few black people that they've even come across in their lives, which is, you know, still a thing. So I spent less time trying to fit myself into a box that other people put me in and just started living and working in a way that fitted me and it worked. And so that is what I do now. That's a really, really good question. I'd say when I was younger, I loved to wear bandanas. So literally, you know, like a tie dye bandana thing wrapped around my head because I was obsessed with, who was I? I was obsessed with Hannah from S Club 7 and she always wore bandanas. And I really liked Faye from Steps as well. She was my favorite. And I think she wore, with those dead ass dreadlocks, but she wore like bandanas as well. I think like, me and my sister had one. We both had like matching bandanas, but I just thought they were the coolest hair accessory ever. The little triangle at the back. I don't know why, but I absolutely loved bandanas. So if there's any way we can bring back bandanas to make them look really cool, then yeah, I'm, I'm all for bandanas, absolutely. <laughs> So my job's really interesting, actually. I buy books for the publisher. That's basically the start of what a commissioning, commissioning editor does. We basically read submissions given to us by agents, or we can actually approach potential authors ourselves. And then once the manuscript's been read, we've got a rough idea of what the book could be. I then take it to a meeting with lots of heads department in my publisher, um, and other editors and um, other people who are involved in the bookmaking process. Um, we take it to an, I take it to an acquisitions meeting and that's where I pitch 
um, this amazing manuscript and this amazing author and then I get feedback from let's say the rights team or the sales team or the publicity team or the marketing team. After that I put together a costing in the back end. I pitched the book again to our managing director saying that this is how much I want to offer for it, this is why I want to publish this amazing book and then once I have authorization I make an offer. And sometimes it's a competitive situation where I'm in an auction with other commissioning editors, but sometimes if it's a, an idea that I myself have come up with or there might not be as much interest from another publisher, it's a lot smoother situation where I can go in, make an offer, and if they accept, then we can start working on the book and the, the, the deal memo gets sorted and yeah, and then we get straight into it. So on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm, <laughs> I'm answering a lot of emails, um, reading a lot of manuscripts. And one of the best things that I love about this job is that commissioning editors interact with every other bit of um, publishing, every other um, division, which I find really, really fun. So, you know, one day I'm talking to the art department and then um, in the same afternoon, I'm talking to publicity and then marketing and then sales and, and rights. Uh, and I really, really enjoy that about the job that you don't just stick to editorial and you don't just stick to talking with other people in editorial. You get to uh, chat to everyone in the company, basically, even the audio team, and the ebooks team. And that's what I like. That's what I really like to do. Whoa, OK, so. Uh, I'll try and say it as briefly as I can. I did not have a traditional or even a linear path really into this role. I actually trained as a geologist, um, which is a scientist who studies the earth. And I went to university to study that. I thought I was going to become a geologist. Um, and I actually wanted to be a geologist since I was really young, since I was seven years old. And then I just realized that, I think it was in my third year of university, I realized I hated it. <laughs> I realised that it wasn't for me. I still had a year to go, but mentally I had just clocked out. I, I didn't enjoy it anymore and I didn't want to do a master's. I didn't want to take a job or an internship there. And because I was already a writer, I'd been writing a blog for almost 10 years at that point. I'd had a few commissions and um, I wrote poetry, um, good and bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, good and bad poetry. I just decided that, you know what, I'm going to complete my, you know, fourth and final year, do the best that I can. And then after that, you know, I'll, I'll go back to London and see, see where life takes me. And it didn't take me very far. <laughs> um, I was in a job for like two weeks and then I quit. I was basically unemployed. I didn't know what to do, but I did find an internship uh, at Creative Access and uh, I didn't actually get it. So it was a publishing role, I didn't get it. And I just realised that my CV was still like a geologist CV. It didn't really have any of my writing skills or talents or editing talents or anything like that because I just didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to really write a creative CV. It was just very structural, really heavy, texty and not good. But after I sorted that out, I found this internship, which was a, uh, what was it called? It was an editorial and publicity internship at um, Unbound, which is an independent crowd crowdfunding publisher. I just remember thinking, this is the last one I'm going to apply to. This is the final, the final, final, final internship. So I'd applied to about 30 or 40 at that point, And I was getting instant rejections and it was just killing my soul. It was killing me. And so I said, this is the final one. And if I don't get it, publishing isn't for me, obviously. I'm gonna try and do something else, maybe some freelance work. I don't. I didn't know what I was gonna do, but I was just like, please, 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 please. If I can just get one interview and I can charm them, please. <laughs> and then I actually uh, got an interview, which was fabulous. And then did the interview and got the job um, with not as much experience um, as I'm sure other candidates had. So I was, I was thrilled. And so that was a six month paid internship. I was really, really happy that it was paid. And yeah, after that, I joined the commissioning team, uh, which was an absolute joy. I, I just couldn't believe it. You know, after an internship, you don't expect to kind of go to that level. But I was allowed to commission during my internship. So it was lovely to carry on with those authors. And then, yeah, after four years, I decided to broaden my horizons, try traditional publishing, found a job for Coronet. Um, on the non-fiction commissioning branch and I just thought it was amazing, too good an offer to pass up and so I, I applied and you know I luckily got the job and it's just been an absolute whirlwind since then and I'm, I'm just so so thrilled 
to be in this job, be in this role. Yeah, it's fabulous. So yeah, I've gone from a, <laughs> I've gone from being in the dirt <laughs> with a hammer, you know, knocking like knocking rocks and you know looking under microscopes to editing amazing books. So it's not a traditional journey at all, but I'm just so grateful um, that I managed to take the risk and follow my dreams. And yeah, yeah, here I am, and I'm I'm absolutely thrilled. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you found it useful and see you in next week's interview. Bye.